Hey guys, Christopher Green, AMTV, Alternative Media Television. A happy, beautiful Sunday to all of you tuning in. First thing I wanted to do right off the bat is just thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. You know, I share with you a very personal story and testimony of my brother Cody Green yesterday and honestly the outpouring of just the prayers and the well wishes and sharing his cause. So amazing. Honestly, I couldn't even sleep last night. I woke up at about 3 a.m. and I was just reading through more of the comments and just cried. Like, I'm so overwhelmed by your love, and my brother's very overwhelmed with your love. I talked to him yesterday, and he had tears in his eyes, and he just said, Chris, God is, God is great. God is good. And he really is. So, hallelujah for that. For those of you who don't know, you want to learn more about my brother's story, my younger brother Cody was diagnosed with bone cancer at 36 years old just about a year and a half ago. And it's been a tragic course of events where he's had to fight multiple amputations of his right leg, his entire right hip. He had a brain aneurysm. His brain was bleeding uh, just a couple, of, uh, about a month or so ago, actually during the COVID crisis. We almost lost him, but one thing you'll notice about my brother is that through the glory of God, power of God, he's always smiling. He always has this big, beautiful smile on his face and he's just a fighter and he's been fighting tooth and nail, literally, literally limb from limb for his daughter Reese, his beautiful wife Rochelle. And if you'd like to learn more, click the link below. Please share his story. He still has a long road ahead of him. We are working on a new prosthetic, as I mentioned yesterday, and rehab and physical therapy. He's been repairing the side of his body that was damaged with his brain event that he just had, which uh, set him back quite a bit. And he still has multiple rounds of chemo that he's facing and uh, just a lot of challenges. So anyways, I just wanted to give all the glory to God and thank you guys so much for everything that you've done. And just also highlighting, you know, what I think is significant about my brother's story has nothing to do with my brother. It has to do with the fact that everybody I know and all of you tuning in are fighting your own war right now. Not just Cody, not just myself, but all of you tuning in. And I got comments from quadriplegics yesterday, other amputees. We got a comment, I put him in touch with my brother, uh, another individual who's younger than my brother who has bone cancer, and I don't think he's had his surgery yet. I also got message from you, messages from a lot of you that have had family members that have passed and died as a result of various types of cancers or various types of challenges. And I also noticed so many of you reacted and so many of you shared and so many of you prayed and just showed my brother the power and the glory of Jesus Christ that honestly, I'm just eternally grateful. And it also highlights that that's what this world needs. You know, there's just so much beauty and love and actual unity. And the mainstream media continues to focus on diversity continues to focus on division, focuses on hate, focuses on race, and just focuses on things that do not bring us together in a meaningful way. And I'd like to hold myself accountable because I have a very large platform, obviously with AMTV to do more stories, not just about my brother, but about you and the positive things actually going on in this world, the achievements that can actually brighten all of our day. You know, one of the most difficult things with the COVID crisis, I know for a lot of you, including myself, has been the mental stress. And you know, I say this quite honestly, even going through with my brother and helping him fight through chemo and surgery and all of these horrific events. Um, you know, I, I described it as a war because I've been fortunate never have to fight a war before or go to war. But, you know, it's really one of those things where you might feel this way tuning in, but it's like there's a certain level of PTSD where you almost kind of feel outside of your body even talking about it. For example, my brother's had to be so strong. I've had to be so strong. My mother and my father, his friends have had to been so strong that you almost kind of go numb. And we've just all been kind of numb at this point. And then to top it all off with the COVID crisis and COVID-19 and the lockdowns and the quarantines, I want to talk and touch a little bit about that today. There was an emergency alert that went out in Texas that uh, warned residents to stay inside. They're now mandating masks in multiple states. It's a misdemeanor crime. 
I believe in the state of Washington not to wear a mask. We're starting to see cases ramp up. And I want to be fully transparent with you. I actually know people now, mostly elderly, 75 plus, that are being infect infected by this and, and affected by it. Uh, one family friend is intubated, uh, over 75. I have other family friends that are in quarantine. And for a moment, I'd like you to kind of set aside politics. And I understand that probably sounds funny coming from the guy who's like super political. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter what you believe about COVID. It doesn't matter what you believe about the virus, where it came from, its authenticity. If you read and kind of see what the agenda is with everything and like where they're pushing stuff, even if you read the official sources on this, you know, we're only a couple months in and we're probably looking at a timeline of at least two years before this really runs its course. And we saw this with the Spanish flu. I've talked about this and I'm, again, I don't even want to be political today regarding this. It's just that I would even question your own assumptions because this will be used for political objectives, whether or not you like it or not. And we're seeing this across the aisle. We're seeing this with Republicans and Democrats. We're just, we're seeing it. And I guess my point is none of this is helping the country. None of this is helping our world. It's not helping us to love each other. I mean, just think about the whole concept of putting a mask over your face. You can't see people smile. You can't see the beauty of their facial expression or their inflections, really the, the face of, of God. We are a reflection of God. Uh, he made us in the image of himself. And that is the image of man. And you can't even see people's pretty teeth anymore. We're all hiding. And not to mention that there's also, you know, I, the mask thing just really gets to me, but there's also studies that say the mask just does nothing for you. I don't, I don't know about you guys. I'm just telling you how I personally feel. I mean, when I put a mask on my face, it gives me anxiety. I can't breathe. I mean, I'm re-inhaling the uh, you know, carbon dioxide. Uh, studies have shown that if there is a virus, the particulates actually get in the masks, which actually increase the likelihood of you getting it. And then for those of you that have kids like I do, uh, we have a very large family with young children. And... Dude, they're touching everything. Like, no mask is going to solve that problem. Like, for example, babies don't have to wear masks because the government can't mandate it because babies won't listen. So maybe kind of think about that. Take a lesson from a baby. If we all just didn't listen, then maybe we wouldn't have to wear masks. The point is, you know, we have all these challenges ahead of us. We have all of you, this is my point, have your own struggle right now. All of you are fighting something. It might be financial. It might be your job. Uh, it might be the loss of a loved one. It might be like my brother fighting cancer. Uh, it could be anything. Maybe it's depression. Maybe you're lacking spiritual guidance. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Uh, maybe you're lonely. I think that's a big one. People have been locked in their homes or they have this mental anguish. And again, nobody's talking about the victims the greater victims of a statistical flu that is less than one, affecting less than 1% of the population, that somehow mandates the 99% to give up all their freedom and liberty to the state. You know, again, the bigger picture, and I've talked about this incessantly, is it's a political agenda. And you know, if you care about my opinion at all, and you think it has merit, which I think it does, because I've been doing this for 12 years now, and I was the first to warn in January during the outbreak of Wuhan that this would be the biggest story in the world and I was telling all of you to prepare and bug out and get food storage and bug out bags and I literally bugged out myself for various reasons with my family and friends this story isn't written yet and there's so many facets and layers to it you take a look at the economy take a look at the stock market just last weekend down 700 points and cases are rising. Accordingly, allegedly, if you believe the mainstream media, our ICUs are pretty much full in states like Arizona. Again, Texas receiving emergency text alerts. How much are we really willing to trade off of our lives 
Again, no one talks about the fact, I really believe there's two ways to die. One is to, God forbid, get the flu, which were the exact words of Donald Trump, it's just the flu, end quote, months and months ago. And they also said, don't wear masks months and months ago, but we're doing the opposite by buying all the masks. One is to, God forbid, get the flu, which is only infected mathematically and statistically less than 1% of the entire population. Or two, the second way to die is to be locked in your home with no job, no income, no career, no love life, no friends, no family, no spiritual life, no church. I mean, my church isn't even open back in Arizona. They just started to open. It's like at 10% capacity and they're probably gonna close again. People aren't being allowed to congregate. We're not allowing to touch each other, hug each other, kiss each other. You know, my mother's really big on this. My mother, if you know her, is the most loving person on the planet. And she kisses and hugs and loves everybody. And she's just this joyous person. And she can't do that. The question is, are we willing to give up our and lose our humanity? I'm not. I'm not. If anything, I learned from my brother is that we need to seize every opportunity, every moment, not only to spread the good word of the love, the life, and the salvation of Jesus Christ who died for all of our sins and to pray on a daily basis, but to Caesars is Caesars, I understand that, but we can't give up. We can't give up our humanity. Never quit, never, never say never. So I hope today's message provides some kind of discourse or hope or I would even like you to step outside of the box of your own pre disposition or preconceptions of what's going to happen next because I've been at this long enough to know that you need to humble yourself and show humility and even question your own assumptions. My gut tells me that things are going to get worse regarding COVID and I think they're going to amplify the second wave. Step out of the politics. I don't care what you think about it. I think most of you know where I stand on this stuff. It's political and it's an agenda and it achieves everything they want to achieve. And if you look at it from that perspective, you'll see what I see and understand where this is all going. However, this doesn't mean that they're not going to amplify and implement the next phase of this crisis in a very material way that I think now is going to affect a lot of people on a very personal level. Anyways, I love you guys so much. Uh, God bless you. Jesus Christ is our King. Please share this video, like it. Uh, also, if you want to learn more about my brother's story, Cody Green, and his battle with bone cancer and just this epic fight that him, my family, and through your prayers we have all been fighting, click the link below and learn a little bit more at his GoFundMe page. And uh, more importantly, just please continue to pray for him and show him the overwhelming support that will keep giving him the courage that he needs through the glory of God to fight and uh, wage war and to never give up. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, just one man, my brother, or look at it the perspective of you and the wars and the trials and tribulations that you're fighting, and you look at something like COVID, Man, honestly, it looks pretty small to me. It's pretty small. In fact, the greatest thing and lesson about this whole crisis is that it's, maybe I'm speaking for myself, as I know it's just brought me closer to God. It's brought me closer to my family. It's humbled me. And honestly, it's shown me the glory of Jesus. And isn't, is that not the coolest thing that could possibly happen at a time of darkness, trial, and tribulation. It's coming back soon. I love you guys so much. Click link below, and I will talk to all of you very soon. <laughs>and please uh, share the story of my brother. Click the link below to learn more about him and his battle at gofundme.com. We really appreciate it. Even if you just donate a dollar, it really does help him get back on his feet 
He has an amazing story to tell, an amazing recovery, and I think provides a lot of hope to this world. Again, thank you so much, all of you tuning in for doing just that, sharing it. For those of you that donate, thank you. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.